so the other day, my wife asked me to go to the grocery store. She says to me, can you pick up a carton of milk? Oh, and if they have fresh eggs, get a dozen. So I came home with 12 gallons of milk. She asked, why did you get so much milk? I said, because I had fresh eggs. If you're not a developer, that joke isn't very funny. But if you are a developer, <laughs> if you are a developer and you understand conditional logic and if-then statements, then that joke isn't very funny. It's, it's a horrible joke one way or the other. Uh, so my name is Robert Gilmer. I am with Shiny9 Web Design, and I wanted to talk today about actions and filters because this is one of the things that is often misunderstood, especially by people getting into this aspect. Uh, it's misunderstood. It's not well explained online, and it's one of the ways to to make WordPress as extensible as possible. So that's my tagline for the, they wouldn't let me put that on the website. I don't know why. Whoa, and then that happened. All right, stand by. It's kind of interesting. Sorry about this, guys. Who doesn't like some good technical difficulties out of nowhere? <laughs> All right. So what are hooks? Hooks are built into the the plugins, the theme works, and even uh, the themes, and even Core itself. They are a chance for developers to make changes to what the plugins, what the themes are doing. Now, for the purposes of this talk, I'm gonna talk about two different kinds of people. People like us are developers. We're the ones that are going to use the hooks, and the people who build the, the themes that use the hooks, build the plugins that use the hooks, we'll call them builders. So there's two sides to this. There's developers and there's builders. Uh, so they allow developers to be able to modify the output uh, and it's not an automatic thing. Builders have to put them into whatever it is that they're building. As a result, not all parts of a plugin or theme are hookable, and not all plugins or themes have hooks. It's down to the person building whatever, the plugin, the theme, or core, whether or not it's something that should have a hook, what type of hook to use, uh, and that sort of thing. So, what uses hooks? As I mentioned, Core itself uses hooks. WordPress Core has dozens of hooks that let you get in and change different parts of the, of the experience, of the WordPress experience. Uh, a lot of different themes have, word, have hooks as well. Genesis is one of the more well-known frameworks that uses hooks. Uh, Canvas is by WooThemes. Canvas is another one that has a different set of hooks. Uh, 2015 and uh, yeah, and different plugins. Different plugins have hooks. Uh, Gravity Forms is a big example, a well done plugin that has a number of different hooks on the uh, on the back end, on the front end, where you can make modifications to whatever you want. Uh, WooCommerce and BuddyPress also also big supporters of hooks. Now the term hook isn't necessarily uh, specific to WordPress, this is a general programming sort of thing. But in the case of WordPress, I really like this because I like the imagery that it brings up. Because when I heard about hooks the first time, my first thought was this. <laughs> For those of you who can't see, these are the railway hooks. Uh, used to be that the train would go from wherever to wherever, and it wouldn't stop in every city along the way to pick up mail. So the smaller cities along the route would put the mail sacks on those hooks. And as the train goes down, it would get the mail off those hooks, bring it onto the train. And that is similar to what WordPress does, because just like with the train, it starts at one point, goes along the track, picks up any mail from any hooks on the way. WordPress starts at the, the initialization, goes through a thing, and as it finds, as it runs through the hooks, it'll check to see if there are any functions hooked into that hook. If it doesn't find anything, it just goes on its merry way, just like the train does. The train could go from point A to point Z without ever picking up any mail. Maybe there's nothing on any one of the hooks. WordPress can go from its initialization to the WP footer, 
and not maybe not uh, pick up any hooks. That'd be kind of a boring sight. There wouldn't be anything interesting going on, but it is possible. Now, I like this analogy because I like the idea of it going down, you know, picking up what it needs to, where it needs to, but it's not a perfect analogy because the train is pretty much set on the tracks. It's not like it's gonna get to a certain point, pick up a mail sack, and all of a sudden take a right turn and, and head to a different part of the country entirely. WordPress hooks, you can hook in, you can make the changes, you can change everything about WordPress. You can make it completely different from what it is outside of the box. Uh, so any questions so far? Any questions on the metaphor? Does it make kind of sense? Yes, no? All right. So there are two types of hooks. There are action hooks and filter hooks. And the common, common description is use an action to add new functionality and use a filter to modify functionality. I'm not a huge fan of that description because it is kind of vague. What if I want to take a standard title? Uh, this is similar to what you'd see in Genesis. You can use Genesis to modify these using hooks. So I have the standard title and I want to add a byline. So this is the code that I want to do this. Now, is this new functionality? I'm adding a new section, so do I use a action to put this into place? Yikes, that would have been fun. <laughs> or, it's a title block. There's already something in it, I'm just modifying, I'm just adding to it. So do I use a filter instead of an action? And the answer, as many things in WordPress is, it depends. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer. And it depends on two things. It depends on, first of all, what the builder has put into place. Maybe the builder only put an action hook in, or maybe the builder only put a filter hook in. But if they gave you both options, it's really, it depends on what, what it is that you want to change and how you want to change it. So instead of that whole adage of if I want new stuff, use an action. If I want to change stuff, use a filter. I'm going to tell you about my plans for the weekend. <laughs> this becomes relevant, trust me. <laughs> now, in truth, next weekend, I'm going to WordCamp LA, but I don't want to talk about what I'm going to do two weekends from now, so it's a metaphor. Don't be so literal. What I'm going to do next weekend is go to Office Depot, get myself an office chair, and I'm going to go to Target, and I'm going to get cat food and dog food. I tell my wife this plan. She can modify my plan in a number of fun and interesting ways. For example, she can say to me, oh, I already bought cat food. You don't need to buy any cat food. Don't worry about that. This is similar to a filter. This is similar to a filter hook because I'm still taking the same actions. I'm going to Office Depot, I'm going to Target. She's just modified my output. She's modified what it is that I do when I get to Target. She says, don't get cat food, don't worry about that. Another way she could change it, each, each one of these examples, we're going to start over, we're going to say, oh, forget all that, back to one. Another thing that she could do instead of removing something, she could say, oh, while you're at Target, can you also get a loaf of bread? This might, this is still a WordPress filter hook, an example of. And that might seem a little strange because we're used to the idea of filters as being something that removes. We're used to filters on Amazon.com that remove what we're looking at in terms of the search, uh, search results. We're used to filters like removing impurities from water. And we're used to filters like profanity filters, removing bad words from network TV. Quick side note, if you guys don't know this, this is one of my favorite uh, replacements on TV. This is from The Big Lebowski. Uh, this is from when Walter is beating nine kinds of hell out of Larry's car. Um, the parts that are in bold, that's not what he actually says. If you haven't seen the movie, you can probably take a look for the scene on YouTube. Don't do it while you're at work or you'll get fired. 
because it's not very good language. Um, so filters in WordPress can add. They can add content, they can modify content, or they can remove content. So it's a little uh, possibly unorthodox. It's a little um, counterintuitive. So. My wife could do the same, my wife could do both of these at the same time. She could say, oh, don't get cat food, but yes, get a loaf of bread. Again, this is an example of a filter. I'm still going to the same two places, Office Depot and Target. I'm still getting stuff, but she's modifying the output. Now, the, this is interesting. This is out of date, because I've made changes to this. So close your eyes for a second, okay. I modified everything last night. I don't know where it's at. Actually, I, I need it. One second. I'm sorry, guys. That's my baby, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, that's... <laughs> that's some other stuff. All right. <laughs> All right, perfect. So let's go down here. <laughs> it's like the Matrix, you know, it's, it's just like that. All right. So the next thing that she could do, the next way she could modify my plans, this is a little trickier, this is a little different. I'm going to dress this up as a conditional. She's going to say to me, go to Target, if cat food is on sale or if dog food is on sale, go ahead and get it, otherwise don't worry about it, don't get the food. So I get to Target. And sure enough, neither one of these is on sale. So I don't get the cat food, I don't get the dog food. This is still an example of a filter. It's changing the output of my trip to Target. In this case, it's removing all output. I'm getting nothing from them. This is something that you can do with WordPress as well. Sometimes you do a filter call, you do a function for a filter, and all you're doing is passing it an empty string. Again, a little counterintuitive when you're filtering something by removing everything, but this is still an example of a filter because I'm still taking the same action. I'm still going to target, I just end up not getting anything. So those are the four different types of filters. You can add stuff, you can modify stuff, you can remove some things, you can remove all things. Um, and then we can talk about actions. So instead of saying, you know, go there, see if it's on sale, if it doesn't, she could just say, oh, don't bother going to Target. I've already picked up cat food and dog food somewhere else. This is an action hook. She is removing an action from my plan. My, now I'm not going to Target at all. She's removed that action. Um, which is something that you can do with action hooks. You can say, okay, something that's regularly scheduled to, to happen, let's not have it happen. And in the same sense, she can add an action. She can say, while you're out, go to Costco and get diapers and formula. Make sense? Removing actions, adding actions. And the third thing I wanna bring up because, again, a little counterintuitive, she might say to me, oh, don't bother going to Target. Go to PetSmart to get the cat food and the dog food. This seems like she's changed my action, but in WordPress, there's not really a change action. There's not really a modify action. In WordPress, you, she, it's similar to what she did here. She removed an action going to Target. She added an action going to PetSmart. Make sense? Yes, no, blank stairs, awesome. And then added two filters onto that action, but it kept the uh, Yes and no. I mean, she, that's a good question. He says, okay, so did she add a filter to my action? I would say no. I would say the entirety of the action is go to PetSmart and get this and this. Um, so I would lump that all under one add action. Would, yes? Would you say that actions are most, most commonly used for um, manipulating methods then? Uh, so are actions most commonly used for manipulating methods? I would say yes, and I'd say also for blocks of code. Uh, filters are, and we'll get into this a little bit more down the line. The idea of a filter is the builder has given us a variable that we can change, uh, and we can take that variable, we can manipulate it, we can give it back, and, but it's a variable more so than an entire block of code. 
generally you'll use actions for blocks of code and you know the, to go back to our analogy she's making me go to a whole different store so does that answer your question okay so that's all great. We're tired of this analogy. I'm tired of saying the word target and PetSmart and whatever it was else I was saying. How do we use these hooks? Well, from a developer standpoint, the two functions that you're going to look for and that you're going to use are add action and add filter. And in all of these cases, you're going to create a function. It's going to do whatever you want, you know, call it whatever and do some awesome stuff, whatever it is, and then you add that action. The, there are two other parameters that you can put into add action and add filter. I'm not going to get into those. It's a little more uh, detailed than I want to go into. But the entire idea is add an action. Where am I adding it? What hook am I putting that action onto? And then what is the action that I want to put on? So a better example is, let's say we want to go back to that original example. I want to add a byline underneath the title on my Genesis theme. So I'm going to create the function, and I don't know if you guys know this, if you're, uh, I always prefix all my functions with something, something unique. In this case, that's just my initials RFG. But you want to have unique named functions because then that way you don't run into errors down the line where add byline is already declared on such and such a plugin and such and such a line. If you do proper namespacing, you'll have uniquely named functions and you won't ever run into that problem. So this is the function. Echo by get the author h2, whatever. And then I have to take that function and put it onto the hook. So now, as Genesis loads, it's gonna get to the part of Genesis where it says, hey, go take a look and see if any functions are hooked on to Genesis entry header. Oh, something is hooked on, this add byline thing. This is the, uh, not parameter, this is the priority. priority, thank you. This is a priority, this just says to run it after what's built in, which is 10. 10 is the title. Uh, add this on afterwards so it goes underneath the title. But now as Genesis goes through, it'll come to that hook, it'll look around for anything hooked onto it, it'll find my function, and it'll put it on afterwards. Yes, sir? What if, what if it does, there's no hook in the place that you want to make a change? What if there's no hook in the place where you asked this question at the meetup, too? Yeah, Dude, what, what, was my answer not good enough at the meetup? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'll get into this a little bit more later on, but if there is no hook, you'll probably have to fork the plugin or talk to the plugin developer and say, hey, is there any possibility of adding a hook in this place to make this change? I've had that happen. I've written my own stuff and did a pull request and said to the developer, hey, it would be a good idea if you could change this variable with a hook, and then they roll it into the plugin. If they don't want to do that, then you might have to fork the plugin, which has its own set of issues. Yes, sir. How important is the priority? The priority is, in this case, it's important because if I didn't have the number 11, 11, the default is 10. So if I had add action, genesis, et cetera, et cetera, it might put it in the wrong place. It might do the byline above the title. So I've got 11 just to make sure that the title runs first, which is 10, and then 11 runs whatever else. Uh, in this case, it's not terribly important. I could probably even get away without using it. But in other cases, uh, it's very important. And in the case of removing actions, you have to have the priority exactly right, or it won't remove properly. Yes? Would you say that helps when you're going to change things all the time? You just you can never account for what they're going to do, so it helps to have that number? Yeah, yeah. So what he says is, um, and I'm repeating the questions because that's what they want for the camera. I know you guys heard him. Um, but what he says is having the priority, and there's also a good way to keep this in place if you change themes. And maybe, maybe this isn't a plug-in rather than a theme. So you put in a plugin, and then that way, even if I change themes later on to another Genesis theme, this will still run in about the same place that I want it to run. Now, if I change themes to a totally different theme, if this isn't a plugin, and I change themes to a Canvas theme, this is now no longer going to run because Canvas doesn't have a hook named Genesis Entry Header. 
So Canvas is going to go through, it's never going to look for something hooked onto this, so it will never run this. So that's a, that's a good question in a whole different way. Um, you know, the, the hooks are specific to, bless you, to the plug-in, to the theme, to the whatever. So if it's a theme-based hook like this, changing themes might make it disappear. But just because now it's not looking for Genesis Entry Header. Does that make sense? That was a good question, sent me on a different tangent. All right, so removing actions. So let's say there are things that I want to remove. A, a big example is maybe I want to get rid of the navigation. Now in a standard HTML driven theme, you'd probably just open up header.php and look for your navigation and comment it out or remove it or whatever. But in this case, because a theme like Genesis does so much with, with actions and hooks and filters, you can find the hook, the do nav hook, which is output the primary navigation, and just remove it. Tell WordPress, hey, this thing that you're going to do by default, don't do it. Canvas is a little different, and I'm going to mention this in passing because it took me a long time to find this, and I struggled with it, a long time, maybe an hour, hour and a half, to find the answer to this and to really struggle with it. Canvas runs a little differently. With Canvas, you want to create a function that removes the action. And here it's got the, pr the priority because it needs it for this uh, to remove properly. And then you add that removing function to your init. And that's just because of the way Canvas calls all of its hooks. Canvas groups all of its actions together into one thing that it ties onto init. So to remove it, we can't just remove. We have to say, put this into that init as well. Do all your init stuff, get all your stuff going, and then run my function, which removes the nav. This is a horrible name for a function. Remove nav is not properly namespaced. I didn't catch that myself until just now. So I'm going to pretend that I did that on purpose. <laughs> I did that to teach you guys. Uh, this is a bad example. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is a bad example because there might be something else somewhere that uses remove nav, so I really should have namespaced that a little bit better, but there you go. All right, so this is actions. Actions are pretty straightforward because actions always make me think kind of like Lego blocks. You can take a Lego block out, you can replace it with something else, you can put one in the center, that sort of thing. Filters are trickier. And filters are trickier because there's a lot of rules to it that don't come intuitively. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, filters are a chance the builder creates a variable. We'll usually assign a default value to that variable. Uh, like 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a default value. Uh, an example is Genesis do post title. They create a variable called title. And in title, this is the builder end of add filters. This is apply filters. This is saying, okay, if there are filters out there hooked on, uh, hung on this filter hook, go ahead and do them. Otherwise, title uh, equals get the title. So the builder has given us the ability to change this variable. So as a result, in our function that manipulates the variable, we have to have that variable listed. We have to take that in as a parameter. With an action, we didn't need any parameters at all. If I were to reverse back, you'd see uh, opening and closing parentheses. But with a filter, first of all, you need to take in a, va a variable. That variable doesn't need to be named the same thing. Uh, you can call it within the confines of your own function, you can call it whatever you want, but it's gonna have the same value. So this post underscore title has the value of dollar sign title from the previous slide. So I take this filter, I take this variable in, I take this variable from the builder and I say, okay, I wanna manipulate it. I want to add on to the end of that variable my byline, get the author. 
And then I want to add this filter. Now those of you who know filters, hang tight for just a second. I'm going to answer your question. Um, so I've got the function. I take in the variable. I manipulate the variable. And then this filter, I add the filter uh, with onto that hook, Genesis post title text. I add my function. And this function does nothing at all. <laughs> Doesn't do a damn thing because so there's our function again, brought in the, the variable, made some changes to the variable. The problem is we're taking in a variable, we're making changes to that variable, but then we do nothing with that variable. We have to return the variable. And that's a key word, return, because uh, thinking about it from a metaphor standpoint, if I borrow something from somebody and I make some changes to it, I'm going to give it back at the end, right? And when I give it back, what's another way of saying I'm giving back your lawnmower? I'm returning your lawnmower, right? I'm not echoing your lawnmower. I'm returning your lawnmower. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'm not telling you about the lawnmower. Yeah, you're not telling me about it. It's not. And the reason I, I call that out is because when you have a function that's returning a variable, you have to do that. You have to return the variable. If you echo the variable, whenever WordPress runs your function, it's going to spit out that variable no matter where it is. It's almost certainly going to be the wrong part of the page, and it's not going to do what you want it to do. So with filters, the two key things, the problems that a lot of beginner and intermediate developers have is, first of all, your filter has to take in a function, uh, a variable rather, and it has to return that variable at the end. So here's the filter as it should have been. So I take in the, the variable, and again, I can call this variable whatever I want to, doesn't matter. I take in the variable, I manipulate the variable, I don't hit the button. Am I okay? Can you hear me now? Is it good? Okay. So uh, we take in the variable. We make our changes to the variable. We return the variable. And then we add that filter to whatever hook we want to do. This is going to work properly. This is going to take in that variable, make some changes, and uh, make the changes on the live end. So some common filters, good examples of common filters. So you know how the read more link on excerpts is useless? <laughs> you know how it's that square bracket, dot, 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 square bracket, and it just, it makes no sense whatsoever? Common filter is, notice how I namespaced it, RFS. Um, I forget what the S stands for. Uh, so common filter is to take in a, that's interesting. Take in and return, instead of returning the bracket dot 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 bracket, uh, return a link, read more to the, to the parameter. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. I just realized that this does not take in a parameter, but it is a filter. So sometimes you don't have to take in a parameter, it would seem. Um, so I'm going to check that out. But <laughs> at least I'm honest. At least I'm honest with you guys. So, so sometimes, almost always, you take in a variable. In this case, you don't, because we're just returning something immediately. We don't care about, that's what it is. We don't care about what was there. We're not manipulating it. We're just returning this thing. So we don't have to take in what it was, because we don't care about square bracket, dot, 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 square bracket. We're just saying, to hell with all that. Return this formatted link to read more. Make sense? Uh, no, it's not taking in square bracket at all because we're not going to add to it. We're not going to change it. We're just going to return that. Hypothetically, you could still put a parameter in there and just override it with whatever you got because you're not adding to it. Yeah, yeah. What he's saying is hypothetically, you could take in, you know, current read more link as a variable and say current read more link equals a class, blah, 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 and then return that variable. But in this case, we're not concerned about that variable because it's so useless that um, we're just saying here, use this instead. Robert, yeah. If the original filter had to be main variables, all those variables are, are available in your, in your future, what you saying? If the original variable, if the original function rather has mil multiple variables, are they all available to us to use as an add filter? And again, that depends. 
It depends on how the apply filters was written by the builder, which filter, which variables they gave us access to, what, um, which dictates what we can change. And then also, and I really didn't want to get into any of this in this regards, if you're ever adding filters or adding actions to classes, uh, functions, five minutes, wow. Uh, function classes is a whole different set of parameters that you have to put in. All right, so I'm gonna kind of start going quickly through this. So here's a good example of length. So this one, if you wanted to return 50 characters instead of, or 20 characters instead of the default 50, you take in length and we just return 20. And I could do length equals 20 return length, um, but I don't have to in this regards. And yeah, okay. So building with action. So if you're a builder, if you're writing your own plugin or you're writing your own theme, um, we've already seen that apply filters is the builder end of add filter. So it would make sense that the builder version of actions is apply actions, right? Except that it isn't. Uh, and the OCD part of my brain, this breaks the OCD part of my brain. I want there to be similarity. I want there to be a parallelism, but there isn't. The builder version of add action is do action. So as you're looking through the code, um, if you're looking to see, is this something I can hook into? Is this something I can change? You'll look for apply action, uh, apply filters, or you'll look for do action. Now, do action is a little weird to me because that's an action verb. It says that there's already something there and I'm going to do it. But in reality, this is kind of, this is a hook that says, if there's something, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go on my merry way. So the way I think about this is, and again, this function doesn't exist. Don't go looking in the codex for it, but will do action. I will do something. If there's something hooked on it, I will do it at this point. Make sense? So, um, so as a builder, you would add this kind of this kind of code into your thing to say, at this point, developers can do whatever they want to as long as they hook into my hook name. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going quickly because I'm running out of time. So, um, some examples are this is a chunk directly out of Genesis. It's just got three do actions all in a row. And then in a different part of the Genesis framework, they take, instead of just having a block of HTML code, they take this HTML code and put it into a function and then tie that function to their hook. And they do this because now I, as a developer, can come in and remove action. Maybe I don't like their default header. Maybe I want to change it completely. So I can remove action to get rid of it and run my own thing, create my own thing, or maybe get rid of it and do nothing. Maybe I want to get rid of the custom nav so, or the primary nav, so we just get rid of it. Uh, a good, again, I, t I come back to Genesis a lot because I use Genesis personally, but a good example of this is there's a plugin called Genesis Visual Hooks Guide. This gives you a breakdown. Each one of these uh, orangey boxes is a hook. In each one of these, you can write a custom uh, action to go in and drop stuff wherever you want to. All right, so this is all gonna be available. Don't worry about writing all these down, but this is all kinds of cool resources about hooks and actions and filters. Uh, and I'm also, it's also available as a blog post, or it will be very, very soon. Um, I just have to sit down and write all of this out instead of, the, uh, instead of uh, slides. So, am I good on time? Cool. Time for a question? Cool. Okay, any questions? You guys have asked a lot of questions along the way, so I'm, I'm pleased. Does that make sense? Is that a better analogy than uh, actions do stuff, filters change stuff? No. Yeah. Okay. Cool, uh, wait, yes. 
So her question is, what's the best way to find the actions, that, uh, the hooks that might be available? If it's a big thing like Genesis, I'd do a Google search and just say, you know, Genesis hook guide, uh, Canvas hook guide. If it's a smaller thing, yeah, you open it up, uh, take a look through the code, look for apply filters and do action. And I, yeah. Okay, so his question is, does using a lot of hooks and a lot of filters on a particular page have any uh, adverse um, performance issues? Does it slow the page down? And the answer is it can. If you write, um, if your functions are maybe not as tightly coded or if you have a hundred functions going into one hook, it might slow you down. But in general, I would say for what you want to do, it's probably negligible as long as you write good code and it, you know, you do garbage cleanup and stuff like that. Um, so the answer is it depends. <laughs> Which is both a blessing and a curse. Yep. Cool. Behind the pole, behind the pole, we got another guy Oh yeah, what's up? Hey! Well, you can, so if you have functions, if you have um, hooks, rather, within a class, uh, as I mentioned really briefly, the add action and the add filter command are laid out slightly differently. Um, so I don't know, is it, are you asking would I not remove an action, or what would? Uh... Well, what I've seen in my book, say for example, you have the hook that you have the constructor in right. the and inside of that constructor, you then say add a couple of actions inside of that. That could be an interesting comparison time to remove it because, okay, how do you say target that constructor? Or, um, oh, there's. I sort of talk with more techie folks than myself when it comes to that regard. Sometimes it could be a real. <laughs> um, yeah, so what he's asking is how do you go about doing it? And again, I didn't have the time for it, but there is, there's a parameter, there's an extra parameter or an extra way that you pass a parameter. Uh, if I remember correctly, you end up passing the action name that you want to remove in an array, like array this comma action name. And it ends up coming out, I mean, I've never had a problem removing an action that was generated by a class instead of a, instead of just on its own. So it can be done. Uh, there's stuff online, I don't remember it right offhand. I have to look it up pretty much every damn time. But um, it can be done. It's just an added parameter. And I think we're done. Yep, yep thank you.